Hey everyone, welcome back. A uh, quick shout out to Super Arrow Live for having or hosting me the other or last week. And um, I'll put a little link down in the note, show notes here for ours uh, if you want to head over and watch the interview that I uh, did with Ryan over at Super Arrow. Um, it was a good time. So um, from our last video, uh, I need to de deconstruct a little bit of the right wing here so that I can be, have it prepped and ready to go for receiving the new hinge that I'll get here uh, I'd expect in the next week or two. Um, just involved taking the rivets out and removing some of the adhesive and then taking off the position light off the wing tip. It, was, it actually didn't go as bad as I expected it to. Um, it came off pretty easily. I just got a putty knife in there and just kind of worked away at uh, some of the adhesive. Once that came off, then it was just a matter, matter of removing all the rivets and getting it back on the uh, jig which um, went pretty quickly actually, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that progress. Uh, I didn't go as far as taking everything off just simply because it's gonna sit on the, uh, in storage in the rack next door and um, no real reason to, to get too crazy with it. Um, fuel tanks, fuel tanks, fuel tanks, fuel tanks. That's always been, that's been one of the harder parts. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm inspecting the forward most portion of the wing and I'd finally broken down and uh, fill them up with water to help identify the holes. The soap issue wasn't working and um, I just needed to get a little more aggressive with it. So uh, it took me a couple more tries and I'm getting real close on that. What we're doing here is lining up the aileron and flaps so that they are square or flush or whatever the correct term is with the wing. You'll see there's a, a, a piece of twine there at the leading or the tail end of the wing itself. And what you do there is just basically stretch that out uh, end to end so it gives you an, a, a point to reference when the wing is in the, or the flap or aileron are in the up position. Uh, get it all lined up, drop it down, put a rivet in, bring it back up, make sure that it's still square, drop it back down, put a couple more rivets in, and just keep repeating it until you've completed all the rivets. Um, I'm really happy with how that came together, and uh, I'm hopeful that that is... Uh, going to work out real well in the long term. I followed the instructions pretty faithfully on that. Um, working on getting the rudder cable uh, 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 piece in here. Uh, it, it's a little bit, it, the instructions are just kind of weird because um, it's just some drawings and a few photos and so you have to, actually a lot of this is just getting the parts out and playing with them a little bit, putting them in, seeing if they fit, moving around, kind of fiddling with it a little bit more and um, eventually it all kind of flows together. Um, things start making more sense. So the drawing is sort of a guide as opposed to this is exactly how it's done as opposed to um, following the, 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 guide, the, 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 the printed version. It's just easier to get it all out and start working with it that, where, that way. Um, looks like I was caught on a Zoom session here. So um, it happens once in a while. It's kind of nice to just pull it down to the garage and keep keep doing what you need to be doing and, and then hop back to work. Um, this this part's uh, pretty much together and, and the cable's just laying there. Um, I, I started work on the wiring and uh, actually had the wrong wiring harness uh, from Midwest. It, it, you know, they, they took care of me right away and got me new new or the correct wiring harness out. And uh, it really, no delays there at all. It just... Uh, I got good practice putting the wiring in, so um, that part's taken care of, um, and that's I think this might be the part where I was pulling it out. I don't know. It was in and out several times, and I just got really good at doing it, um, just following the channel along the the left hand side of the wing there. Um, yeah, this isn't the part that it, I had the new part in, and I was just rerunning it. So um, I'm coming to finding actually finding out that. The rear fuselage isn't going to be on the bench a whole lot longer just simply because it's the bench is somewhat high um, just from you know an ease of use or ease of working on things and um, I just need to have a better position for it so you'll see me move it down to some sawhorses here in a little bit and uh, it, it comes up and down a few more times um, just getting that last of that the the device or, or the 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 bracket for the uh, rudder cables to go in, riveting that into place, and um, 
This is just the, a repeat of that from a different angle, getting it on its side and doing that. Um, now I'm working on the luggage floor assembly here. Um, this just goes together pretty straightforward. Um, get all the, the, the ribs lined up and just kind of pop it in there and it goes in pretty quick. So, so much of this is just putting things together, seeing if it looks right, proceed a little bit further, put a few more things together, see if it looks right. Um, you get really, really good at doing the Clecos for sure. Uh, so uh, you can see it's back out here and I'll get it cleaned so that it's all prepped and ready to go for the final assembly when we do get to it. But there's a whole lot more that has to come after this. Um, a lot of the big pieces are gone at this point in time. Uh, the only parts that aren't out yet is the uh, the top and bottom skins and uh, some of the side panels. So we moved the, the fuselage down on the sawhorses here so it's a little bit easier to work on, um, not leaning in as far, and uh, then just getting all of the components for the, 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 the rear luggage floor or the luggage floor installed. So, um, you know, I just add a couple pieces on here at a time. That's the rear door or the rear rear portion of the fuse rear fuse rear portion of the luggage area. Um, and because I'm not doing a parachute, uh, it's got a lot of extra space. Um, that's my one of my nephews, uh, Nathan. He came over to help, and uh, my father-in-law is back over helping. Um, Nathan's actually able to get some school credit out of this, and um, so he comes over once in a while. They're working on the um, rear luggage ex extension area, which if you're not familiar with the sling, there's actually this little box that you see there that extends a little bit further back into the, the fuselage. And it's actually kind of nice because, I mean, you can't put a lot of weight back there just because it gets too FCG, um, but it does give you a little extra space to um, put some things in there. I expect things like, um, you know, like oil for you know, if we're out on the road or cleaning supplies for the airplane or just basic support stuff like that. Um, I plan on building a, a box or, or something to hold all of that so it just slides in and out pretty easily. Um, so, you know, some of this has been good because I kind of coach Nathan along a little bit on, you know, just thinking through the, the process of building things and why certain things are assembled the way they are um, in the that rear luggage compartment there. Um, the rivets need to go in in a particular way so that they're not hanging up on things when you slide them into the back uh, compartment. Um, he really likes pulling rivets, um, so you may see him start pulling some rivets down the uh, right-hand side here. And uh, it's kind of nice because I can just kind of point him in a direction and be like, all those rivets, they need to be done. So when we get back to doing the wing, I'll make sure that I have him back over to do that. We moved the fuselage back up onto the workbench and uh, just kind of had a quick conversation about where we're at with this process. And then we moved the fuel tanks back out because I'd had another week to uh, fix some of the leaks that I'd found and uh, we're just doing another water test here. Um, the water test was literally the last thing that I wanted to get wanted to do, but the soapy water method wasn't working and um, it just needed a little bit more, or something that worked a little bit more obvious and uh, because the uh, fuel tank doesn't can't you can't fill it all the way up when it's sitting on the, the sawhorse we flip it over and, and I you know I seal up the the fuel cap real good and uh, check both sides of it so at this stage of the game I believe I have all of the leaks resolved um, so the kit that we got was actually destined for another customer and uh, I had bought a kit without a parachute. The other customer had bought it with a parachute. Because of that, uh, the kit sort of was a hybrid, and I received part of the kit as a parachute and part of it not as a parachute. Um, one of the side skins was damaged very early on, uh, even as early on as like June of last year of 2021. And in that period of time, they sent me another piece of skin out. So um, through that process, uh, I wound up having two left side skins for the top. And one of the side skins was for a parachute and the other one wasn't. Well, in, in all of the parts that are sitting around, I actually wound up grabbing the one for the parachute and had this big hole. And uh, 
we had already got it all put on and my father-in-law said, Hey, you know, there's that other piece of skin down there and, uh, went down, grabbed it out of the basement and sure enough, it was cor the correct skin. So we're moving along pretty good with that part. Uh, Nathan and my father-in-law are working on the rear, um, spar jig or, or re rear spar assembly and jig. The jig is the, the top part there you see. And then the, the lower portion is the part that receives the actual rear portion of the wing spar. Um, I was busy looking for the next parts and that's actually me pulling up the, uh, the other skin that I was telling you about. So I brought that up from the basement after he pointed that out and I was like, oh, okay, that's exactly what we were looking for. Um, got it all cleaned up, got it on, got it onto the fuselage and it, it's, it's just perfect. So, um, that's, I think the hardest part is still kind of tracking down parts. Um, cause there's just a lot of them and, uh, they are kind of a little scattered out just from a spacing perspective. And to me, this was actually a pretty exciting moment because we were able to get the main spar out, uh, get the bubble wrap off and start actually working with that component. Um, cause this, that's like the spine of the airplane and it feels like, okay, I'm, I'm working on the airplane at this point in time. I'm sure you have the wings, the control surfaces and all that. That's great. But, uh, we're we're really moving into the airplane looking like an airplane at this point in time. Um, Nathan and my father-in-law Harold uh, had left for the day, and I kept working and uh, um, just finishing up the uh, riveting and, and completion of the that rear spar assembly because we had, we had to take it apart, clean it. Um, generally, the rule of thumb is put it together once and make sure we've got every, all the parts and everything fits. And, um, once that's done, then take it back apart, clean it and put it back together, uh, make sure it's assembled. Um, you know, so this is just the autopilot bracket and it's a little bit of a uh, fiddling to try to figure it all out. And, um, the way the, the autopilot bracket mounts through uh, a couple of screws and, um, nuts there it's just really tight you can't get a, a a wrench in where the the bolt or the nut is supposed to be at and uh it's a hex uh screw so it just takes a lot of fiddling and it took a good probably 45 minutes or so to get all i think it was six of those screws in and get them all you know taken care of so fortunately that's a a one and done kind of thing um from here it's just getting some ribs out for the um the, to attach to the wing spar itself. The channel that I've got there uh, that I'm putting things around is the channel that the main landing gear goes into, I believe. Um, so I was just getting that prepped up. I uh, got another day that went by and uh, I did get the, uh, the additional wiring parts that I needed from Midwest. So it was stick everything back apart and uh, get the cabling pulled out and get the new ones the, the new cables run. Um, from here, it was just, you know, getting us some more space because we hadn't originally cleaned the skin material. We just put it on for a test fit. Uh, so we took it off, got it all cleaned off, and then uh, got it scrubbed down. You might be able to tell back there, I've got the vertical stabilizer uh, just clicoed on to the rear portion of the airplane and or the rear fuselage there and that's just basically to get an idea of you know make sure is everything fitting and what else am i missing um definitely can't put the skin on well if that uh, vertical stabilizer is on so ultimately we wind up taking that off and um, putting the skin on so from here uh we still haven't click anything as far as the top skins on the rear fuselage um they're just click into place and they'll, they'll be there for the time being because uh, we do need to work on the rest of the the forward portion of the fuselage and until we get to working on the canopy so uh here we are we're just cleaning the ribs for the uh the the, the or the ribs that attach to the the main spar and started you know clicking them back together and um that's about when Nathan had to head out his his mom my sister is in the lower left hand corner there and she stops by and you know just kind of asks questions and she's she's interested uh camera's off a little bit here but what i'm doing is is there's a uh, think 30 rib nuts that need to go into the uh channel as well as the ribs and uh i've been doing a uh, epoxy mix 
with the rib nuts when I go to put them in uh, just because I don't want them spinning at all and even though you can pull a rib nut it still has the chance that it might spin in that that location so with each rib nut there's a little bit of epoxy that goes on with it and I finished off the process with uh, working on getting all the parts together for the the luggage door itself there's there's quite a few little parts or little pieces that kind of have to go in the right order so checking the instructions out and uh, making sure where you know everything's good to go we'll pick that up probably in the next video so um yeah thanks for watching uh thanks for subscribing when you do um thanks for the folks that are helping and um if you have any questions please feel free to ask and i'll be happy to help thanks talk to you later